Alright guys, well, this is my current situation. So, uh, it's look closely, you can see it's uh, still snowing, but uh, it's let up quite a bit. Um, more is on its way though. Uh, anyone else have, uh, you know, Snowmageddon on their 2024 Southern Bingo card? Or is that just me? What's going on you guys? How are y'all doing? Mini Truck, back with another video. Um, <laughs> well, as you guys can see there, we are stuck here in the snow. Um, in this lovely um, snowstorm, blizzard, whatever you want to call it, that we're having here in the south. Uh, I'm currently in Alcoa, Tennessee, here at, what's the name of this place? It used to be known as Alcoa. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the new name of it, though. Um, came up here to get loaded, and now we're stuck here. They're not letting anybody go down the hill or come up. Um, I think there's a truck jackknifed on the hill, and they're waiting for a wrecker, and um, we're waiting for someone to come plow it and all that so trucks can go up and down now But until then we're stuck here, but I am loaded. And I am ready to roll except I'm, I'm running out of hours. So that kind of sucks um, But I figured in the meantime I'd make this video kind of talk about uh, how my first week here at Loudon's been um, Kind of what's went on uh, talk about orientation a little bit and how orientation went and kind of how things have went so far so uh well, i guess get into it as you guys can see i got the truck set up um it's nothing special it's just a uh i think it's 2017 or 2018 cascadia mid-roof um it's really just a base model truck nothing nothing crazy um let's see here i gotta finish organizing that you know i got my food and all that shower bag clothes and uh, you know everything in here but man it is a mess out there so it's uh not bad though it's a pretty good truck runs you know it's nothing nothing fancy but it uh does the job That's all I care about you go put back in there like I had y'all before um so talk about kind of orientation um rundown of that so orientation was probably the easiest orientation i've had with any company um starting out of course like most companies they do get you a rental car um, they get you a hotel uh, the rental car came from enterprise um, ended up with a chevy malibu uh practically brand new really really nice car um so hotel was we stayed at the laquina inn it was a really, really nice uh, little hotel for what it was. Um, probably one of the nicer ones I've stayed in. Uh, so, starting out Monday, first day of orientation, you ain't got to be there till 8 a.m. You uh, you'll go in. There's five of us in orientation. We'll start out, you'll do a little bit of paperwork. Um, in the meantime, they'll call you up they'll take your picture um, to have it in the system you'll fill out some stuff as far as your for your self-certification for your med card the paperwork for your med card and the physical and all that um, and a little bit of like your uh, your banking information for your uh, direct deposit after that they'll have someone come in and talk about safety um, the big thing about safety was you know like most companies you know, watch your speed, watch your following distance, you know, no using your phone while you're driving. Um, so, after that, they, uh, they take you to do your driving test. The driving test was super simple. All it was is you get in the Chevy Express van and drive it around. You don't even drive a semi. It was stupid easy. After that, they'll uh, stop you guys. Out. We'll all go together. You'll stop and get something to eat. Um, take it back to the uh, 
terminal, you'll eat your lunch, then you'll take your rental cars, you'll go do your physical. Once you're done with the physical, you can just go back to the hotel. I think I was back at the hotel by like 2 p.m. Um, they also give you a uh, $50 gift card. Uh, it's like a blank gift card. You can use it anywhere, not just a specific place um, to cover your dinners while you're there. Um, let's see. Day two. Day two, you just uh, go in again, 8 o'clock. Uh, they're going to come in. You're going to do your tax information, um, all that. You're on so a few other things you got to sign and do on the computer. Um, then they'll talk more about safety. They'll kind of talk about the ELD, the drive cam. Um, you know some some of the you know specific you know rules and, and uh, requirements, things like that. And then they'll go over securement. Securement takes up most of the day, and once you're done with your securement class, you will all go and bring back the rental cars to the uh, rental place. Someone will fall behind you guys in the van, and then uh, they'll bring you back to the hotel. I think we were back at like 4 o'clock that day. And they also got us lunch that day as well. They ordered pizza. And uh, day three. Um, two of us had to go through a hazmat class. If you have your hazmat endorsement, uh, you have to go through a hazmat refresher. It's just something they require. Um, once that's done, they'll send you over um, towards the shop. Um, they'll put you with your dispatcher. Um, and then you'll basically get the keys to your truck. You can start getting your stuff, moving it in there. Um, and... Uh, Hold on a sec. Sorry about that. So I thought someone was knocking on the door. Um, this guy next to me, he's like, he's cleaning off his windows or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, they'll send you over. You can get your truck. You know, they'll make sure you got everything you need. Uh, got your truck, all that. Um, I think I was actually the first person, even though I was, like, one of the last people to get to go over there because of the hazmat class. Uh, the people that didn't have hazmat got to go ahead and go over there and do that. Um. I think I was the first person that actually came out with his truck. I took it over to the hotel, grabbed my stuff, put it up. Um, my dispatcher already had me a uh, trailer where he had a driver that was leaving. He went ahead and just kept onto this trailer and gave it to me, so I'd have a trailer. Because one thing they do here is you don't, you know, do a bunch. You don't do any drop and hooks. You'll you'll stay with your trailer unless something like a major breakdown happens. So that's, that's pretty cool because you can set the trailer up how you want to have it set up with your equipment and whatnot, and then you're, you're good to go. You ain't got to worry about someone taking your equipment or whatever. Um, yeah, but just, you know, got everything set up, um, got everything in the truck, made sure I had everything I needed. They asked me, hey, you know, do you, when do you want to be home? What do you want to do? And they had me a load, and I was one of the first people to roll out. Came up here to Alcoa, um, picked up a load gone. That's how orientation went. Orientation went very well, very easy. Um, the only bad thing about orientation is there's, and there's one of these people in every class, the one that knows everything, the one that can't keep their mouth shut, um, has a comment or a story for anything that gets said. Um, and this dude was probably the worst one I've ever dealt with because he was one of those uh, sovereign citizen types. You know, I can't, if I had a dollar for, uh, Every, put it this way, if I had a $100 bill for every time I heard him say uh, that our military our, or our government or our first responders like police and uh, those types of people, um, if I had a dollar or a $100 bill for every time he said they don't know what they represent um, or they don't know what they stand for, I could probably pay off my house. And we were all getting so tired of it. Like, he was the worst part of orientation. But, other than that, orientation went very well. Luckily, I ain't got to deal with this dude probably ever again. So, you know, but we all couldn't stand this guy. Uh, anywho, um, so, that's how orientation went. Uh, starting with my first load, picked up here at Alcoa. What is this place called? Hold on, this is irritating the piss out of me. Our 
it used to be known as Alcoa, but now it's Arconic. Um, so picked up here, went up to somewhere just below Toledo, Ohio. Dropped off, went down to Middletown, Ohio, picked up a load going to Von Orr, Tennessee, but um, it actually took me home. I got to take that load home and then delivered it this morning. It's uh, Monday. So I was home about one o'clock on Friday and then left out this morning. And I uh, played hell getting here this morning. Uh, just due to the snowstorm, I mean, we had about six inches of snow when I left the house. It's been snowing most of the day. Um, it's been crazy. And then I've seen trucks jackknifed in the median. I've seen them jackknife block in the road. I've seen cars off in the in the ditch. I had one car pass me. I was doing about I was doing about 40. Um, this was a really slick spot, and I was behind another truck and. Uh, this car blew past is probably doing 60 70 miles an hour and about 10 miles up the road he was in the trees on its side hope they were okay but I mean shouldn't be driving that fast in the snow um, so other than that it's going pretty good uh, I've seen, noticed that a lot of the loads pay pretty damn good for being a company driver um, being that they pay percentage um, you don't get a cent per mile on the load so if you've got a deadhead you don't really get paid for it but usually the load makes up for it um, I've said before I'm not going to talk too much about pay um, just because of my experience with USA I, a bunch of us did that a bunch of people came over because the pay was so good then the loads got saturated and just you know um, I will say this though um, the load I took coming from Middletown to Ohio to Von Orr um, paid about 80 cents per mile with the deadhead um, and you don't tarp because I mean we're Conestoga and it was just a coil so I got 27,000 pound coil um, that's three four chains on it and rolled with it so super easy um, this load pays really well and um, you know, seems like you can make some money here. If you really want to run, you can. Seems like you can make some money here. Um, dispatchers, everyone I've talked to, has been super nice, super helpful. Um, gave me good advice. Hey, you know, if you're ever in this area, keep this in mind. Or, you know, hey, we got a shop over here, and you know, blah blah blah. You know, so it's been really cool, really cool experience. I've met some really nice people um, while I was here. And uh, it's been nice to kind of be back in the flatbed because I, you know, I was a little leery about it because I hated it when I was with rail. But then again, I was also tarping in, you know, sub-zero temperatures in frickin' Chicago with the wind blowing and everything. And then, you know, I was only getting paid like 40 cents a mile and like $10 to tarp. Or was it 15 I can't remember. So it's a, it's been a really good experience. I've enjoyed it. Um, so let's talk about the bad that I've dealt with so far. Now the bad has been really just some trivial things. Uh, one of which being the load I picked up um, in Middletown, Ohio going down to Venor, the one that I went ahead and went home with. Um, that's another thing. They will get you home. If you want to be home, they will get you home. You might have to deadhead, you might have to go out of the way, but they will get you home. I told him, hey, I need to be, like this weekend, I said, hey, I need to be home Thursday. It doesn't matter when. It can be Thursday, late Thursday night. I just need to make sure I can get to the DMV on Friday to do my self-certification. Because uh, I couldn't get online. It wouldn't let me online. It wouldn't let me log in for some reason. So, um, I've got to go up there. And he said, hey, not a problem. I've got this load going up to Michigan, this load going down to Bowling Green. And then maybe we can find you another little short hop. And boom, you'll be home. So... As of right now, if, unless this changes it too much, just having to sit here because of the snow and whatever they got going down on the hill over here, um, hopefully it doesn't mess anything up. But, anyways, what I was saying is they will get you home um, if you need to be home or want to be home. So that's that's really cool. But the bad. So that load I picked up in Middletown, Ohio. Dispatcher says, hey, you know, I've got this load. Um you can pick it up at 8 o'clock tonight. He's like, the little planner's still putting it together. It's not on the board yet, but I will send it to you as soon as it's on the board. 
soon as I get the information, it should just be here in a few minutes. Cool. Sounds good. Alright, hold on again. What we got going on? Oh, this is a truck move. Where y'all going? Hey, what? That's on the hill now? No? Okay. Um. So. I said, great. Sounds good. And it was cool because I was like, cool, I can pick this up. It'll be Thursday. I can pick this up. Um. And if everything, as long as they didn't take too long to load, I could get to the house by 1 o'clock that morning, Friday morning. I start heading that way, he sent me the address, and I never hear anything else back. And I get down the road, I'm not too far, and I'm like, hey, I still ain't heard nothing. I pull over, and night shift uh, dispatch is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then night shift planner called me and was like, hey, you know, nothing. They weren't able to still get it put together. Um, let me see what I can take care of for you. I'll call you back within the next hour um, and I was still about two hours away he calls me back about an hour later just like he said and says man unfortunately I cannot get you a load uh, I mean the uh, appointment for tonight but I can get you an appointment anytime tomorrow and so seven I said seven o'clock sound good seven o'clock in the morning he had me the appointment and I went and picked it up that was a little irritating but I mean I get it stuff happens you know I'm not sure who really dropped the ball on that one but, you know, it happens. Not a big deal. Um, so then that same load, I said, took it home with me, had it over the weekend, went to drop it off this morning. He asked me what time I, uh, Friday, uh, before I got out of the truck, before I got home, my dispatcher said, hey, you know, what time do you want to drop it off, uh, you know, on Monday? I said, 10 o'clock sound good? 10 o'clock sounds great. I'll get that put in the system and, uh, make sure that's good with them and you know we'll be good to go and uh, I think cool you know he said you call me if, if they if he can't do that I never hear nothing so I think cool you know we're good and then until Sunday afternoon I get to put some stuff in the truck and notice hey I still don't have an appointment time this place is by appointment only uh, weekend dispatch doesn't know anything about it they don't have anything in this system for my appointment We've got the snowstorm coming. I'm like, well, I don't really know what I should do. I don't want to head all that that way if, and during the snowstorm, if I don't have an appointment, I'm just gonna have to sit there. Um, finally, this morning, my dispatcher calls me back. At this point, I'm running late. If, if assuming I had the 10 a.m. appointment, and turns out, yep, he's like, I don't know why the planner didn't submit it into the system that you had this appointment, but yes, you did have a 10 a.m. appointment. Let me see what I can do to get it changed. And which he, he seemed very understanding. He wouldn't, you know, ill or nothing. He seemed very understanding on what, what my out, uh, my viewpoint was on it. And uh, he said, hey, you know, can you know, one's good for you now. You know, what, what time's good? And I said, noon. I can be there by noon. And uh, he says, all right. Sounds good. And I head that way. Sure enough, I was here. At, I was there at like 1130. Um, but then I had a problem where the planner didn't put in the right appointment number or a delivery number so I had to call and try to get that and finally the place just let me go without giving them the delivery number um, which they were a little ill about because they kind of put them behind because they were waiting for it um, but I didn't realize I had the wrong number you know the, the planner put in the wrong number so that's kind of been some of the problems I've had um, that and the super long wait times here at Arconic but you know that's kind of not really my you know employer's fault the rest of it you know, I don't know what's going on with the planner and dispatch. Um, but that's really my only complaint. Um, other than that, super nice people. Great company um, so far. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see if we can't get past these little hurdles. See what's going on. You know, maybe work on some better communication. You know, maybe there's something I can work on. Um, and see what's going on with them as well. And Because uh, other than that, I mean, it seems like a pretty solid company. So that's been it that's that's kind of the review on what's been going on where i've been what i've been doing you see it is still snowy as hell sorry i had to see my face so close but uh yeah so uh that's about it we're still waiting to go down this hill apparently uh, i'm gonna call and make sure so i'm fixing to be out of hours and uh I'm just gonna run out of hours. I might as well go to bed. So when this clock resets, I can get rolling, which really sucks because I think that's gonna put me at a 
out of time, so I uh, really screw up my time. So, but I know this video is getting pretty long. I do apologize. Um, hopefully, it helps you out. If you have any questions, if you have any, let me know. I'll see what I can do to help you out. But uh, you guys take it easy and uh, peace out.